Well, it's the latest stark warning from Louisville Metro Police regarding who they call a serial robber in southwest Jefferson County. Thanks so much for joining us here at 5. I'm Isaiah Kim Martinez. Doug and Shay are off. Tonight, police telling women to be vigilant and watch their surroundings as they go into the holiday weekend. It's the developing story we've been watching here for weeks after a string of overnight assaults targeting women in the PRP and Valley Station areas. LMPD releasing new clearer photos you see there of the alleged suspect. You can see he's dressed in black with a hoodie and face covering in many cases wearing just one glove and seen with a handgun. Police say they've discovered he'll lurk in apartment complexes for hours wandering out of place looking for his next target. Reporter Travis Breeze spoke to residents who say their apartment complexes have been raising awareness. Police say the suspect has attacked women three times here at the River Breeze apartment complex off of Terry Road. The residents I spoke with said that their apartment managers are taking several steps, but they are still all on edge and they're hoping that he is caught soon. LMPD releasing new photos of the suspect Friday, noting he wears one glove and carries a silver pistol. Police will have extra units in the area this weekend, but ask people to check their surroundings before getting out of the car, travel in pairs if possible, and be extra careful between midnight and 6 a.m. Residents say their property managers have taken extra steps, like sending out mass emails with the same steps police recommend and encouraging people to leave their porch lights on. Does it feel like it has like made everybody in the apartment complex on edge a little bit? I agree it has. I think that we all kind of just been talking to each other, asking if we've been updated and knowing about the situation and kind of just working together to make sure that we're all kind of protecting and looking out for each other. Police say the suspect is tied to seven total incidents, one being investigated as a sex crime and another where a woman was badly beaten in the face. They say he has tried door handles, but don't believe he has broken into any apartments yet. In Louisville, Travis Breeze, WHAS 11 on your side. And as a reminder, here's how the victims have been describing the attacker who detectives say is responsible for every incident. A black man about five foot ten, thin build and wearing all black with a hoodie pulled up over his head and a silky mask covering his mouth and nose. Police believe recent news coverage could be pushing the suspect out of southwest Jefferson County to other parts of the metro. Now, with that in mind, police are asking all women to be vigilant and aware of your surroundings, especially between the hours of midnight and six in the morning. If you see anything suspicious or know any information about the assaults described, call that anonymous tip line. That's 574 LMPD. LMPD says it's received several tips and actively following leads. More news right here at five o'clock. A man has been arrested in Shelbyville after allegedly threatening family members with a gun and running near an elementary school. According to a Facebook post on Tuesday, Shelbyville police were called to an incident of a person threatening others with a handgun. But when officers arrived, they say the suspect ran toward two schools, cutting through backyards. They were seen near Painted Stone Elementary School. We're told the school resource officer there was outside and was able to get the kids inside to safety. The school went on lockdown at that moment as an extra precaution. The man was then taken into custody and he is now in the Shelby County Detention Center facing felony charges. And an update tonight in that interstate road rage shooting from July. One of the three suspects is facing new charges in this incident, which has left a six year old girl paralyzed and in a wheelchair. Jonathan Rivera was the first person arrested in an I-65 shooting. Police say in July, a group of motorcyclists got into a fight with people in an SUV. The motorcyclists allegedly opened fire on the SUV with three children inside. Rivera was arrested in July, charged with possession of a gun by a felon until officers could figure out his role in the incident. Now he's charged with five counts of wanton endangerment. Rivera, Edward Sark and Shelby Bisconer, you see there, are all charged in this road rage shooting. And tonight, another violent twist in that very same case. Two inmates 
And Metro Corrections are now facing more charges after officers say they attacked Edward Sark, the man accused of firing the bullet that hit that six year old in the car on Sands. That attack coming just hours after Sark was booked into jail. According to court documents, Zava Parr and Malik Jenkins attacked Sark late Wednesday night in a jail cell. The report says the two men were punching him before throwing him to the ground and stomping on his head. Sark had to be transported to the hospital with what officers are calling serious injuries. Parr and Jenkins are now facing assault and wanted endangerment charges on top of the charges they were already facing. And the decision in Metro Councilman Anthony Piagentini's ethics trial will have to wait here. The board asked for a 30 day time frame to deliberate. Deliberations continued today after the days long trial last week. The charges stem from a complaint of accusing Piagentini of leveraging his power as a local lawmaker to get a new job. Piagentini co-sponsored a proposal to allocate American Rescue Plan funds to a nonprofit. He abstained from the final vote, but the very next day, Piagentini took a job with that agency. The Ethics Commission requested the full transcripts and received those today. They voted to leave the matter open until the end of September. They hope to have a decision by October 19th, so it'll be a while. If he's found to have violated the city's code of ethics, the full Metro Council could vote to remove Piagentini from his seat. And a new service provider is now up and running for Riverlink toll bridges connecting Louisville to southern Indiana. The new provider aims to improve customer service. They're bringing a local call center, new and updated customer service walk-up centers, and a better website and improved tolling equipment as well. But there's one big change for customers without a prepaid account. River, Riverlink is shifting away from sending individual in invoices, instead opting to send monthly consolidated bills. This new monthly bill is going to be much easier for folks to understand. It's going to be very similar to a utility bill or a credit card bill, and all of your crossings will be consolidated in one spot. Riverlink says the transition should be seamless for customers, but they wanted to let people without prepaid accounts know too. Invoicing was paused back in April, and they are now going to start catching up on those accounts. So don't worry if you get a bill from activity a few months back. It's not a mistake. And lg &E announced they are moving out of their Main Street Tower, you see here, becoming the next company to leave downtown Louisville. lg &E have been at 220 West Main for the last 30 years, and they currently have 14 floors in the building. The company plans on renovating their Broadway location, which already houses hundreds of employees down there, and spreading the downtown employees across many of their other locations. Their Main Street lease is up in 2025, so they'll remain at that location until then. And today, World Fest returned to the Belvedere downtown for its 21st year. The four-day event is all about music and entertainment, along with exposing everyone to the world's cultures. It'll feature three entertainment stages, which will showcase more than 70 acts across the festival. There's also more than 40 vendors and over 100 booths offering global crafts and merchandise. Tomorrow, there will be a parade of cultures to celebrate all our diverse heritages here in Louisville, as well as a naturalization ceremony to welcome dozens of new American citizens to our city. We get excited about all the fun and the food, entertainment, and so forth about yep. World Fest. But what's really most important about World Fest is this is our opportunity to emphasize diversity, inclusion, and equity. This is the largest event that we do, and we are trying to get all folks to come together regardless of your uh, how you identify and come and celebrate. Deputy Mayor Barbara Sexton-Smith there. The festival will run through Monday, which is Labor Day, September 4th, and admission is free. Well, Ben, we've had a beautiful week of weather, and I guess what folks are hoping for is that continues into the holiday weekend. Yeah, I can almost smell the flavors uh, wafting into downtown <laughs> from World Fest. Some great food out there to enjoy, and, and thankfully it'll stay dry, Isaiah, through the weekend. This is a live view over World Fest there at the Belvedere, and this is probably going to be our most comfortable evening. It's in the 80s, the humidity not too bad, although it's up a little bit today compared to the last two days. Right now, feeling like 87 and 88, uh, pretty close to normal for this 
this time of the year. We've got 86 in PRP, Fern Creek 86 as well, uh, 90 showing up there in Sellersburg and 85 in Lanesville. Uh, so pretty similar temperatures, lots of 83s and 84s around the area, and we'll start to dip down in the 70s right around sunset right after 8 p.m. Good weather for our Friday night high school football. See a few more fair weather cumulus clouds over Kentucky. It's been almost all sunshine over Indiana, so uh, it remains the same for this evening. Again, dry weather, 70s after sunset, overnight low temperatures in the 60s, and then uh, more sunshine tomorrow, and our high temperatures will top out in the upper 80s and lower 90s, so a few degrees warmer for tomorrow as the 90s return. It looks like the 90s aren't going anywhere anytime soon. So your forecast, clear and mild tonight, low 69 degrees, so not as cool as our last few nights. Sunny 84 at lunchtime tomorrow, and your forecast high for tomorrow afternoon at 91 degrees. A little bit on the warm side, of course, for our first uh, local college football games as well. I'll show you how long those 90s will hang around coming up in our complete forecast. Sounds good, Ben. Thank you. Now the recovery process is underway after Hurricane Adalia brought damaging tornadoes, severe flooding and powerful winds from Florida to the Carolinas. And as the recovery process continues, President Joe Biden is vowing federal resources to the area's hardest hit with plans to survey the damage tomorrow. ABC's M. Wynn has more from St. Petersburg. Idalia from Florida to the Carolinas, leaving behind a trail of devastation. In the big bend of the Sunshine State, where Dahlia made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane, buildings and businesses destroyed. It was heartbreaking. She had many tears. And just thank God nobody died. Houses ripped from their foundations, cars and debris littered the landscape. Here in St. Petersburg, Florida, more than 24 hours after Dahlia had passed, most of the waters have receded, except some neighborhoods are still flooded, like this one, up to 10 inches. This mother of five returned from evacuation to find her home inundated with up to two feet of water. Outside, this pile of their belongings, all of it destroyed. You just brought it all out here? Yeah, uh, they're going to, we have a dump truck where the city said they were going to come pick everything up. So we're just trying to get it all out, wow. get the house dried out. It sucks to lose everything. Everything, including her home itself. Where are you going to so. go after this? Um, well, we still kind of have to figure that out, but we're safe and healthy and we'll everything's replaceable. President Biden signing a major disaster declaration for Florida with plans to survey the damage on Saturday. So our immediate priority is working with state and local officials to really understand what their needs are. President Biden is asking Congress for billions of dollars in extra disaster relief funding in the wake of Adalia and the wildfire disaster in Maui. Emwin, ABC News, St. Petersburg.